Welcome after buzzers, you're watching the after show for Queen Sugar Season 4 Episode 11, I'm Sorry, where tonight we talk Micah and Kiki derailed, Charlie and Jacob's master plan, and Ra and Darla reconnect. Stay tuned for more. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Welcome Queen Sugar fans, we are back, we're down to, but I'm your host, Saka Smith, joined by my lovely co-host, Miss Dontara Terrell. What's up? How you doing? How you doing? I am great. How are you? Good. We have so much to discuss. We definitely do. But uh, um, what? I, we, before we get into our overall thoughts, we have our news. We have our predictions tonight. We have our uh, we have our getting back to Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> I'm totally forgetting our segment. Big easy scene. Our big yes. easy scene. Big easy getting scene. back to yes. Louisiana. We have our <laughs> same thing. Yeah, yeah. same yeah. thing. <laughs> we have our big easy scene. So we'll talk to you a little bit about the life of Louisiana. But before we do all of that, we got to talk about our overall thoughts of I'm sorry. What, what 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 did you feel about this episode? You know, it was a lot of I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what? I one of the things that I pinpointed the heavy rain throughout the entire episode. Yeah. So I had to Google what does rain symbolize? <laughs> washing yes, away. Washing right? away. So it's the renewal, it's rebirth. Um, washing away the old and rain growing something better. Yeah. So I feel like we witnessed a lot of that in terms of in each person's relationship or their dynamic. Yeah. Um, both good and bad. No. But it was sort of like a re- like a resurgence or a rebirth or something like that. Yeah, I, I saw. I felt like we had a lot of new growth. Yes, um, definitely. And, and definitely from characters, we saw some growth in the way they tackled things this episode as well. So um, I'm excited to get into it. Yes, um, let's do it. Well, let's talk about Micah and Kiki Durrell. I, I've loved their little love story this entire time. Uh, what did you think about, I, I guess, the plan going a little haywire and then Kiki's reluctance uh, about going through with it? I mean, I don't want to bolster Brack here, but I did say that <laughs> my prediction. Like, Where's this going? <laughs> my prediction last uh, episode was that it wasn't going to happen. Yeah, so yeah. It was going to get derailed. Yeah. So I just want to say. You just want to get yeah. a little, yeah. little just, props just to you, okay? okay. Um, but also, um, the showrunner for the show, for um, specifically, he was talked about uh, Micah and Kiki and just their relationship dynamic. Yeah. Um, and he said he wanted to represent black love with beauty and respect. Yeah. Because there are, they are some like very responsible teenagers. Yeah, and, and very like <laughs> they're having real open conversations. Yes, really, yeah. like better than adults. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I loved it, especially when he talked about the hotel room and wanting to make her comfortable and kind of explaining how you know how it kind of got out there. Yeah. Yes, I love that, and even like just planning in terms of contraception, just the whole just dynamic. I'm like six weeks. She's been taking the birth control. So right. <laughs> I'm like, wow, thinking ahead because I feel like most teenagers they just be like. Well, let's do what it do and start it, ripping off yeah. clothes, you know. And I, I think we didn't have those conversations when we were growing up because it was like a little too taboo. But those are conversations you need to have so you don't have a pregnancy that comes out of something, you know. You, yes, agreed. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because I always tell, uh, I laugh about it now. Yeah. But when I went to college, my dad, he was like, okay. I think it's time we had to talk about the birds and the bees. I'm like, Dad, I had a whole high school. <laughs> I'm graduating. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm in college. Yeah. Like, this should have happened, you know, long ago. Oh, but man. Poor guy. Poor right. Guy. That's just always hilarious to yeah. me. But I just feel like, I feel like their parents have discussed with them. And in turn, I feel like they are discussing it with each other. They're just being really responsible and really cute. Yeah. And, and I feel like also, even with the rain, Micah wasn't pressuring Kiki, which I loved. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes men or guys would be like, well, I mean, we still got the hotel, yeah. so let's, you know, let's make it happen. Yeah. This is only one night, you know, and, and he's just like, with, I respect you. Yeah, and especially with her kind of, you know, letting him know that she is kind of moving forward, he's not trying to rush it, even though she's taking those steps towards that it, part, too. Yeah. respecting her boundaries and just respecting her, her wishes yeah. and just her as a person. Yeah. Loved it. And I, I loved the whole group dynamic we saw in that room, but I, I thought, and I, I loved hearing these young kids' dreams of what they wanted to do and how socially responsible, you know, opening up the clinic and, you know, making sure that people that were underserved could get medical treatment. Yes. You know, the one guy that wants to do the bail bond, he wants to open his own law firm and make sure that people aren't sitting there in pre-trial, which I actually worked on that um, while I was in law school. I was working wow. in pre-trial, making yeah. sure that people were able to get out of jail and not sit there while they had to wait for, you know, the next court date. Right. But I, awesome. I loved it, but we had Micah who didn't have anything, which I thought he spent, a, you know, I thought that whole thing in France was to get his mind going. But you know what? I actually had that initial thought. Yeah. But then I thought, I'm like, okay, so go back to 17, 18, year old, 18 years old. 
you don't have life all figured out. Yeah. And it's okay. I feel like sometimes society and even family puts a lot of pressure. Like, so what are you going to do? So after you graduate and you're going to go to law school and you're going to major in this, you're like, well, let me just get through graduation. Let me just get through prom night first. You know, I feel like even as adults, we're still trying to figure this thing out. You know, Michelle Obama said it uh, best. She was like, somebody had asked her what she wanted to be when she grew up. She was like, I'm still trying to figure it out. (laughs) And I'm the first lady. She was like. I think that's, I think that's a grown up perspective. But I think with this young group of kids, it, it to me it's a little out of sorts for Micah not to have something that he wants to pursue. I agree, but also yeah. to that point, it just shows you like, wow, like you know his, I guess his his growth was to a certain extent. But when it came to his future, he's like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. I feel like it was a, a turning point for him too because all of his friends seem to have their stuff together and, and they have plans they yeah. have goals and he's just sort of like I'm gonna do the respectable you know respectable yeah. thing and get into I guess so, well, no Michael what do you want to but do we, we, missed, we missed woke Micah because at one point he was the wokest of the group right he was like <laughs> ready to lead the charge so I thought he was laying out a framework but I guess he was caught in a moment or or maybe you know he was just sort of going with the flow. Yeah. I feel like sometimes life does that. When you're just going with the flow, and you're like, oh, shit, life yeah. is, like, really happening. Because yeah. next year, what, in a few months, he's, like, a full-fledged adult at this point. Yeah. He doesn't have his mom to hold his hand and, you know, take I mean, she still probably will. But yeah. at this point, the world and society is looking at you like, okay, and, and to be you honest, graduated. And to be honest, I feel like when we get fired up about new things, whether it's, like, religion. Like, I had friends that, like, you know, went Christian, and then all of a sudden they were fired up about it. Or friends that, like, re- realized something and they were fired up about it. And then I guess that fire kind of... You know, dies down. Dies down and you got to figure out what do I do next. So maybe he needs to go on a whole other soul searching journey. Yeah. So he can f- figure out what makes him happy. What's gonna you know. Yeah. And what's either, his passion. And either way, it looks like Kiki will be by his side. So it's not so bad. You think so? <laughs> I don't know. She's going to lane. He's going. I don't know. But they seem to have a real. I mean, the connection I saw was one that looks like it'll move forward for a long period of time. Um, I feel like maybe not consistently I feel like it might get derailed again and then they'll reconnect once again we'll see I'm loving yes. that that love, love story and if, <laughs> if, you, and if you guys are out there loving that love story too please go ahead and give us some great comments if you're on YouTube uh, make sure you're liking giving us a thumbs up if you're on iTunes five stars we really appreciate you guys making us the ESPN of TV talk we love you guys give us the rating leave us a comment being a part of After Buzz TV has meant so much for us and we enjoy your support Yes. So, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Second that. <laughs> but again, um, let's get back to our next topic, and we got to talk about Charlie and Jacob's master plan, which kind of came out of nowhere. Um, at least for me, came out of nowhere. But I loved watching the. I love. We see J- Jacob Bujo tripping away at some of his own sort of biases, right? Slowly but surely, but he was faced with an ultimate test. What do you think about? I guess Jacob's character and how he has evolved um, throughout the seasons. Do you believe him? What do you mean? Do I like? Believe? Like, do you like? Do you after, trust him? After you gave the press conference, yeah, yeah. Hmm. And, and 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 I, I, he looked when he said to Charlie, "What can I do?" He seemed to be very genuine. And I've come across people like that, white people like that, who have realized the truth and wanted to know what could they do now that they've realized this truth about whether it was legacy or family or just what was happening in general in the current time. And so I, I felt that genuine spirit from him. Hmm. But whether or not he's strong enough to resist other forces later on, who knows? But that from part. him, exactly. <laughs> that part. Yeah. <laughs> Will he grow a spine is the question. <laughs> and that's what I'm concerned about. Yes, I mean, in that initial moment, I mean, they're stuck in a, in a thunderstorm. They're pretty much trapped. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> so let me let me tell you what you want to hear. And yeah. then let me, and I feel like the Landry's are always 10 steps ahead. Yeah. So even though he held that press conference, I don't see this plan sort of working in Charlie's favor. But do you think he's being genuine currently? Mm, I think his intentions might be there. Yeah. But, I mean, the road to hell is paved with what? Good intentions. So <laughs> what does that necessarily mean? I feel like he showed us time and time again his character. And Oprah said it. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. <laughs> um, so one press conference is not going to alleviate everything that he's done in his, his entire family dynamic because ultimately when, if, he, if he has to choose a side he's gonna go with his family but is this not like now he's gonna they're doing the whole reinvestigating the pricing scheme that, that they're doing so does politics this, politics but isn't this now action though isn't this more than politics isn't this action he's actually gonna investigate this and make sure that everyone is being, being priced fairly 
He's telling us that. Yeah. We don't know what's happening behind closed doors. Oh, so you're fully skeptical. Yes. Like, fully skeptical. This, this is, is all happen. a political game. Yeah. And I feel like, yes, tell, tell us what we want to hear. Change the narrative. Oh, let me get this information. And yes, I'm going to do a press conference, but behind closed doors, the Landry's have everyone in their pocket. So they could be like, we're doing this. They can do something like manipulate the documents and but, be like. Say, but, ja- but Jacob seems to be a different type of member of this family, right? Yeah, at least to me, and I, and I think part of it might be motivated by the fact that he likes Charlie, because I still feel that chemistry between the two. Um, <laughs> so I, I, that's why I feel he's genuinely doing this, and he's going to at least go with Charlie's plan as far as he possibly can go, and whether or not he'll have a Jacob moment of standing up for himself or standing up for Charlie or just kind of going to his family side is what I think we'll see. But um, but I think right now he's he's in it. Mm. No, no, the verdict's out on that one. No, I feel like this whole little plan is just gonna blow up in Charlie's face. Also, I was kind of, I'm like, Charlie, you need to vet this information. I mean, granted, it's it's probably true, but I mean, mean, Nova's research from the book that proved to be a little. (laughs) (laughs) She just handed over. (laughs) Nova's research skills are a little sus, right? A little sketchy. So I'm like, (laughs) but I gotta say. If after all you've done, if this isn't right right now, no, but this better, you better have done your, your, your <laughs> dotted your I's, crossed your T's, this better be real, right? That, that's true. Yeah. So. You, you know what? That might be true. Nova probably looked over that. Yeah, she, I mean, I was like, times. this has to be right. <laughs> 50 11 times. She's like, I'm going to revisit this yeah. and make sure. And she really wanted to do right by her sister because yes. she, she's trying to get back in her good graces. But can I also say, yeah. the, the black woman in me, whoo. The spirit when Charlie said the arrogance of mediocre, mediocre white men never ceases to astound me. Yeah, but Felt that. but Felt you know the the follow up to that was he said it's not arrogance it's power, and 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 I think that, that those two go hand in hand. Is the arrogance comes from always have having had have the, the power. power. Yeah. Yes. So I, that that whole conversation. Yeah. I was glued like. Oh, yeah, that was yes. like the dynamic. Yeah. That's what you hear. And, and, and but that's true. Yeah. It, it's so true. It's completely it's true. So true. <laughs> And so I felt all of those words. And I had to learn that the hard way in corporate America. <laughs> and, you know, the boys game and just yeah. the, the corporate politics and just like the white boys club is just, yeah, yeah I learned yeah. it the hard and way. And you feel like you're starting from 10 paces behind. You got to catch up and do X, Y, and Z, Z to make yourself even better just to be seen on the same level. Exactly. And I, I think same that's what Charlie it. has dealt with and why she is so... Charlie, why she is who she is. So <laughs> badass. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and of course, we um, now we got to talk a little bit about uh, Ra and Darla. <sighs> <laughs> Where should I begin? I mean, <laughs> that's well, a whole notebook. Yeah, right? Well, well th- the theme of the episode was called I'm Sorry. So let's talk about Ra giving that apology to Disha. Um, that was one of the saddest moments, even though they both actually handled it really really well that was Look one of the face. saddest I'm trying, to, I'm trying to process these thoughts because you know I'm just trying to go back and see it like happen a different way because I didn't want that to happen um, what do you feel about the way he had he let Disha know and her response to it I thought it was very mature of Disha so I'm like get out my house what you mean <laughs> wasting my time <laughs> but I also like I respect Disha and I appreciate the fact that she stood up for herself she stood up for her self worth and her dignity and was like you know I respect myself too much to play second fiddle. The fact that she even had him over there after two weeks of not hearing from him after the missed date. But you know, sometimes you're going to get him. Now, you know how that goes. If you like somebody, you feeling somebody. Oh, man. You're like, I'm not talking to him. Yeah. You come back over, you be like, okay, so. Yeah. So what's up? All right. So, yeah. But also, his his transparency. Yeah. Um, I could definitely appreciate that, too. Yeah. I feel like more, more men and women need to be just transparent in their actions or just in terms of how they truly feel yeah. no one's a mind reader yeah. and don't string people along like just the fact that he was he was like you know i just haven't been honest with you and yeah. i also feel like that was a weight lifted off his shoulder yeah. for the last two weeks and and he said the words i'm in love with darla like, i was shocked well, by those actually words he said if she hurts i hurt oh when the, she yeah. bleeds i bleed <laughs> i'm still in love with darla yeah. like you gotta <laughs> I said, oh, you over there bleeding, buddy yeah, boy? Yeah, <laughs> I was going to bring that up because I was like, you didn't need to say that right now. You're talking to the girl you're breaking up with. You didn't need to go that deep right now. He could have just said, I'm still in love yeah, with Darla. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she bleed, I'm bleed. <laughs> she hurt, I hurt. You know? <laughs> it kept going on. You're digging a nice yeah, deep. Yeah, I was like, oh, uh, Deja. Uh. Well, our kids are playing in the bedroom. Come on. Um, but what I did love about her was her maturity and talking about the kids still being able to play and not letting that be a hindrance. That's what I'm saying. Like, just the maturity of it all was just like yeah. that was like a very 
like the breakup. I don't yeah. even know what. <laughs> it almost makes you want to have a breakup just so you can exhibit that maturity during right. the. Right. I'm like, ain't no throwing dishes. Yeah, ain't no like, like, breaking dishes. It's in been Rihanna two said. weeks. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she kept look. She maintained her yeah. composure, even though you know I know my girl Disha. She probably cried herself well, to sleep well, that night. Well, and... what, I, what I love about this actress is you can see those moments in her eyes where it's like, I'm gonna turn the corner and make another choice. It was almost as if she had been through that before and she. I'm not gonna break up in a bad way. <laughs> Cause there were moments where it was like, nope, I'm gonna be the kind, compassionate person right now. Cause this is what he needs to hear. This right. is what he needs. And so even in those moments, she's still giving him what he needs and concerned about Darla and that she's all right. I was about to say, she even asked about Darla yeah. and Blue and was just like, you know, I want them to be good. Yeah. I'm like, but this is this also goes back to the point where when you're a whole person ready for a relationship yeah. as opposed to going to a relationship, yeah. you know, still carrying stuff or still trying to figure things out. Once you're whole, like 100% whole, I feel like that's how you will react or, exactly. you know, cause, because you know how to process your feelings. You know how to uh, communicate. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know just how to handle situations. Yeah. And Everything the, doesn't have to be a big fight and get out my house and, you and, know. And especially with Ra, because I feel like there was a moment towards the end where Disha was looking at him as if, as I think a lot of us in the audience are looking at him, where you're not making the responsible choice and you kind of, it to me it's like, she's looking at him like you're going toward towards the train wreck right now. You're running towards the fire and you don't need to be, but you obviously are like a moth to a flame. You can't help it. It's, it's, it is what it is. Right. I was about to say, but who wasn't, who's not thinking that? Yeah, like, yeah. I literally have on here, like, he is tied to guilt and trauma because he even said, yeah. you know, I don't want you to feel that hurt again. Yeah. Sir, you're not her father. Yeah. Like, you and, know, and he feels you guilty, own, yeah. Yeah, like, why are you feeling guilty? Yeah. Um, but also, even, I just feel like he's trying to save her. Yeah. And like, it's like a project for him. Like, I just want to save her. Um, or do you think Ralph Angel needs that sense of dependency from his significant other to feel like important or to feel masculine or feel wanted or needed? Uh, I feel that's something we can all feel, so it's possible he does feel that. Okay. Um, but given who Darla is and the situation that they've been through, I think he feels even now knowing that she's like had the whole rape situation and believing that he now feels even guilty for that. And right. and you could see when he heard that it almost kind of absolved her of what he believed she was guilty of because when he heard that you can see it melted and it turned from a oh you kind of hurt me situation to someone took advantage of you situation mm -hmm. uh and so to me that's where that that's coming from now this extra guilt that you know i'd always been been okay. worried about you but now i didn't protect you when you did need it the most okay yes and so that for me we had talked about the whole rape situation before and i had revisited some of the comments from the last from the last they show were coming for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they came for you boy <laughs> but I, but i think part of that is especially when i saw ralph angel and how upset it affected him and how it actually might be part of what drives this new rekindling of the relationship you know, for me, it was, are these the facts for her to be relaying to Ralph Angel at this time? You know, without figuring out more about whether or not there, she was actually raped and are using this terminology, or should she just be moving on? Not moving on, but not giving this information to Ralph Angel until she's sure about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, we going back down this road again? <laughs> well, just because I believe it is driving, and I want to revisit it for some of the people that had been talking about it, but it is driving the new relation or what seems to be a rekindling of the relationship part of it seems to be because he believes she was taken advantage of at the time which she was <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. but i don't feel like that's necessarily driving yeah. um what's driving it i feel like ultimately ralph angel darla has ralph angel's heart yeah. um at the end of the day he, look he's driving in, in the rain for her yeah. and doing everything you know yeah. breaking up with i feel like his dream girl it's like everything you asked for, yeah. Yes. So I feel like it's it's a little deeper um than the rape situation. I feel like it's I feel like he's always wanted to be with Darla, but now mm -hmm. he's getting to a point where I'm gonna stand up for my girl. Yeah. I don't care what other people say. Yeah. This is how I feel. And you know, he doesn't want to live in that with, with the weight on his shoulder or constantly thinking about her. Yeah. He wants to be there for her. Um, and I, I think for me as a viewer, I'm having to come to accept that these two are going to be together and we just have to figure out a, a, a way to keep them together in a way that I enjoy. <laughs> but I felt like yeah. there was really no uh, exit for Disha. So I feel like she's going to still be around or be back or some kind of reconnect. Maybe not this season, but maybe yeah. next season. Because I, it, it was a breakup, but it wasn't like that ultimate breakup. You know how sometimes yeah. you could tell, oh, okay, well, they're not coming back. Like uh, with Nova and um, her old professor. Yeah. That was sort of like yeah, a yeah. clean cut, you know. Well, I think we'll see Disha again. And I, I mean, I hope 
Deesha is either a model for Ra or even a model for Darla. Maybe Deesha and Darla become friends and is a model for Darla <laughs> to, you know, to do something different. Right. But I am upset about this whole Ra and Darla yeah. situation. It, to me, this is the first time I, I'm accepting them as a couple again because it, he's clearly he's clearly tied to her. Yes, right? So definitely. it's like, we just got to figure out a way to make it work somehow. Many layers, though. Many layers he's tied to her. Yeah, and... and why, if Darla had spent two weeks away from Blue, and he's like, you need to spend more time with Blue, but you're spending all your time with Darla, where's Blue? Like, Ralph Angel, like, I don't know who's raising Blue right now. If Darla's not raising him, and you're all the time with Darla, where is Blue? See, he got that strong borderline, borderline <laughs> support system, so that, See, but <laughs> they all chipping in. But that's what I'm concerned about is, like, you know, Ralph Angel, I think, has got some work to do on himself, too, because it seems like... That's what I'm saying. You go yeah, into a relationship whole. Yeah. Deesha is whole. Yeah. Ralph Angel, like, 50%. Yeah, exactly. And, then, and Darla's, like, 25. Like, so, yeah, I feel like you can't rely on the other partner. You know how they used to say, like, uh, you go into a relationship or a marriage and, you know, two people... Um, you know, makes it whole or completes it. No, yeah. one person completes themselves, and the other person will come in and, and give you two hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Not one, two halves make a whole. Yeah, yeah. I, I never got down with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I did before we move on talk a little bit about Vi and Hollywood. I think they had. It was great to see them rekindle um, everything, and I think they had some important conversations about um, men talking and women talking and support. What did you think about uh, Hollywood's idea for the real spot? Well, see, I like the hangout name. I don't like the real <laughs> spot. I was like, oh, well, and then the I'm like, right, and then I'm by, you know, shut that down. I was like, sound like a whole bunch of people who are gonna get arrested. I was like, oh, well. <laughs> <You're> like, okay, <laughs> right, okay. Um, actually, Ava DuVernay tweeted out uh, a mirror image of season three when Hollywood was the one giving Aunt Vi a bath and you know giving yeah. her her self care. Um, because I think I can't remember what exactly happened, but it yeah. was a, a bad point or a turning point for Anvi. And now to see that being reciprocated and seeing the dynamics change yeah. was like really nice. I love, I just love them. Oh my gosh! Finally like, back and in that groove. And, but wait, yeah. how about Anvi getting a little spunky? I said, do I see a bra? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say like we all we always talk about Anvi like this older woman and the, but really in that scene I didn't even see it. I, 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 yeah, I was right. like, oh, okay, well there we go. But I love how they're touching on like. I feel like this is like real life adulting that yeah. they're touching on. We don't, this is like the, the stuff we don't get. I feel like adulting people usually think, oh, I have to pay bills on time or I have to do this. No, you need to take care mentally, emotionally, keep yeah. that inner circle tight and, you know, the conversations that you're feeding yourself. Yeah. You know, there's so many aspects and dynamics of adulting. Yeah. And I feel like they are like touching it. It's much more than getting a job, paying bills. It's so much more than yeah. that. And I, I love that Hollywood's like, well, I got that self-care part down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you rub my back right now in the bathtub. I got it down. Right. Uh, but I just, I, I did love, because I, I have felt that way where it's like, I want to have a group of, especially a group of black men where I can talk and share these issues that we're all feeling. And sometimes it feels like very isolating because you think it's, you're the only one. And then, because even with the advent of Twitter, I was like, learning, oh, I'm not the only one who stopped or feels this way when I'm stopped or doesn't know how to deal with this sort of issue or that issue. Right. And so it was just like real refreshing to hear that we're also having a conversation about how we can get together and talk about these issues. Right. But I feel like that's that that's that mental maturity. Yeah. Y'all yeah, 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 yeah. another level yeah. now. <laughs> and, and honestly, it shows like Queen Sugar that give us the language to talk about mm -hmm. it in that and way. And create that conversation yeah. and just, you know, ignite that flame. Definitely. Yeah. I love the affection that those two show to each other. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, it's it's so unreal. It's so cute. Where's my Hollywood? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you start getting your feelings. Right. It's just like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, before we get too far in your feelings, I think we got a little bit of news. We do have a little <laughs> bit of news, you know. TV news. Going back to Aunt Vi. So, look, Aunt Vi is on a crusade to highlight the importance of diversity and inclusion in the film and television industry to elevate the voices of black women through storytelling. Now, According to the USC Hollywood Diversity Report, did you know that of the 1,200 top grossing films released between 2007 and 2018, only nine were directed by women of color? Wow. Right, that's a very low number. Five were, were directed by African American women, and the report also showed there was a 70.7% decline, decline between white males and women of color, working as producers across the top 300 films from 2016 to 2018. Wow. So Aunt Vi, um, her, the character, but real name, Tina Lifford. Mm -hmm. uh, she will serve as a tour ambassador in conjunction with I1 Digital, um, and she will moderate select c conversations focused on women owning their voice and authoring their own stories in an effort to lead women of color on a path to self-discovery 
and the realization of the true potential as content creators. Now, as part of the discussion, uh, emerging female storytellers will also showcase their work and participate in dialogue that champions a deeper understanding of the often old, untold stories of marginalized communities. Oh, so that's amazing. One uh, time for Aunt Vi. Yes, yes, yes. Tina Liffer, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we're living this great time where we are getting a lot of these stories told, but we forget how still underrepresented we are. Isn't it crazy yeah. how much progress we think that we've made yeah. or are making? And you, then you look at the numbers, the actual facts, and you're like, oh, wait. Because, <laughs> because you know, the progress, especially now, is so public. Public. So we see these public figures, you know, Ava DuVernay herself, just yes. putting so many people, empowering so many women. But, uh, you know, we're not anywhere close to being there yet. So we, we still have a lot of representation to, to make up for. And then getting that next generation ready to, to step in those shoes. But I love how people are, like, now utilizing their platform and yeah. utilizing their voices for the next generation. Yeah, yeah. It's not, you know, not a silent the conversation or discussion anymore let's sweep it under a rug yeah. or like a crabs in, in a barrel mentality like oh no I got put it on I don't know how y'all gonna yeah, do yeah, it but I, I'm on top but let's lift everyone up yes, and let's talk lift everyone exactly. up, definitely yeah Ava is the queen of that so it's amazing yes <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like the queen sugar cast are all taking notes and they're following her lead exactly yes. so I love it um, and then of course we have our big easy scene yes, yes. <laughs> are you guys ready for this woo <laughs> <laughs> you felt that too yeah. <laughs> Because we are about to talk about the voodoo roots in Louisiana. Nice. So, the Some roots... Nova Bordelon roots, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the roots of voodoo actually go back to West Africa and was brought over during the French colonial period in Louisiana. The same tribes that practiced this ancient religion were also relocated to, he uh, to Haiti, which shares a lot of similarities to voodoo in New Orleans. Uh, voodoo in Louisiana has its beginnings in the early 1700s, from 1719 to 1730, 1731, uh, the majority of enslaved Africans brought to Louisiana were fond people and other groups such as the Mandinga, Nard, Mina, Fon, Yoruba, Chamba, and Thango people, <laughs> trust. <laughs> um, and they also brought their cultural practices, languages, and religious beliefs rooted in spirit and ancestor worship. All of the groups were responsible for the development of Louisiana voodoo, their knowledge of herbs, poisons, and the ritual crea creation of charms and were intended to protect oneself or harm others became key elements of voodoo. Now, the practice of making and wearing charms for protection, healing, or the harm of others was a key aspect to early um, Louisiana voodoo. Uh, a charm was used to poison an enemy and it contained the toxic root of a very certain tree I don't want to butcher it, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> Y'all not about to read me in the comments. <laughs> but it was brought from Africa and preserved in Louisiana, this tree. The ground up root was combined with other elements such as bones, nails, roots, holy water, holy candles, incense, bread, and crucifixes. This openness of African belief allowed for the adoption of Catholic practices into Louisiana uh, uh, voodoo. Now, another component uh, that was brought from West Africa was the veneration of ancestors and the sub subsequent emphasis on respect for the elders. Oh. Uh, this allowed the older generation that were enslaved to live much longer, which helped to embark wisdom and cultural history upon the people. Nice. And singing is among important rituals as part of voodoo worship. Songs have been passed down orally for hundreds of years. Songs would be accompanied by padding, clapping, and foot stomping, but not drum playing. Um, unless it was part of the weekly public ceremony in Congo Square in New Orleans during slavery times. And my last one, we're just going to get into some of the voodoo queens. <laughs> <laughs> the voodoo queens? Yes. Oh, okay. As y'all can see, I was really into the <laughs> subject. So <laughs> voodoo queens were known to exercise great power in the communities and had the role of leading many of the ceremonial meetings and ritual dances. They were considered practitioner practitioners who made a living through the selling and administering of charms and magical powders, as well as spells. Do you believe in voodoo? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, among the 15 voodoo queens in neighborhoods scattered around the 19th century New Orleans, Marie Laveau, and I mentioned her last week yeah. um, during the Big Easy scene, was known as the voodoo queen, the most eminent and powerful of them all. Her religious rite on St. John's Eve in 1824 attracted nearly 12,000 black and white New Orleans. Um, once the news of her power spread, she dominated the other voodoo leaders of New Orleans and um, they attended Catholic Mass as a strategic way to protect their true beliefs. Her influence contributed to the adoption of Catholic practices into the vo voodoo belief system and she's remembered for her skill and compassion for the less fortunate and 
you might remember her if you watch American Horror Story. Uh, she was portrayed by Angela Bassett in season three. Yeah, of course that was uh, yes. <laughs> so. quite the portrayal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's like a, I believe you can shift energy. I believe in energy, but you know, so I believe people do things that have an impact on other things. You know, okay. but you know, growing up, it was sort of like voodoo was sort of that. I don't know if it was sort of like that funny thing or that thing you didn't really believe in, but you almost made fun of at times. But there's a rich history behind it that I, yes. I think we're not even encouraged at all to explore. Well, you know what? I feel like um, in previous years, yes, absolutely. Like yeah. my grandparents' generation, my mom's generation. But I feel like with our generation, it's more um, you learn – not that voodoo is necessarily a bad thing, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like sometimes when people position it yeah. in terms of like, oh, they put spells or they do this, like for instance, yeah. my grandmother, she always, we were never allowed to like comb or brush our hair um, in other people's homes. You always had to take the hair out because apparently uh, people use that hair and they could burn it, they could do oh, all kinds wow. of stuff with voodoo. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. so it was always like. Yeah, and it was it, it was never something to be studied as a academic Right, pursuit. Yeah. right. Right, I studied Buddhism and Hinduism, but no, don't even that bother negative. with that. Yes, yeah, don't yes, even, don't even look that. at that. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, well, it's good to know that there's some history that we should probably be educating ourselves yes. more about. <laughs> and of course, let us get into our predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. predictions. Micah and Kiki mm -hmm. are not going to last. They're going to break up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I feel like you're not here for Micah and Kiki. I am, but like, I'm just what? trying to be realistic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you deserve that one. You totally no, I heard do, so... but I just, look, that's the adult in me. That's not the. Yeah. That's not that imaginary love story. Oh, I'm like, nah, man. he going here. Mm -mm. <laughs> They, or if they do, they're going to have some roadblocks and trials and tribulations. <laughs> um, also, I feel like this whole game plan with Charlie and the Landrys is just not going to happen. It's going to blow up in her face. <laughs> and that's going to lead to the next season. Um, and I'm a little... Okay, so the cop and Nova, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of rooting for them, but I'm a little skeptical. Yeah, because now it, it's almost like now they have no roadblocks. So yes. maybe well, the roadblock was the time management, and I feel like the kids is another dynamic, and yeah. just trying to figure out their lives. And, and to some extent, what was I mean? Like they talked about, I guess, the fact that they had these roadblocks, and maybe that even made it more attractive. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if having nothing in their way makes it more like. Mm. We've lost something here. Or maybe they're going to try to find some roadblocks. You know how, like, yeah, if something's too yeah. good to be true, and then you just start making up stuff or yeah. trying to figure out, well, no, in the back of your head, you start creating these scenarios. <laughs> like, oh, no, you know, yeah. that's not going to happen. But they are almost pushing us to root for them, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and he's trying. Yeah, he's, Look, he's uh, at least from this last episode. Yeah, he's trying he, now. He's, he's really saying trying. all the right yeah. things. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy in the book. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. So those are a few of my predictions. Um, oh, we see. Something with Jimmy Dale coming. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I well. well okay, we'll, okay, we'll yeah. table that. <laughs> I'll say for Mike and Kiki, I, I see them working out. I I don't know in what f frame or form or fashion, but I see them working out. Uh, they seem to have really good communication, and Mike seems to be open and honest, and vice versa, and far beyond their years. You know, <laughs> like we were discussing, like this is unusual. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but with that, them being open and honest going back to the conversation that they were having and Micah was sort of unsure of his future, yeah. I feel like he's going to do need to do some, some mental clarity and soul searching. So in that case, sometimes you, you can't be involved with other people. You have to get well, yourself together first. Well, what I will say is there, I think there's an X factor of Ant. And I think Ant may not be hanging out with them because of Micah, and I think that'll cause some friction. Because mm. um, yeah, because he didn't. About our boy Ant. Yeah, because he <laughs> didn't show up, and then they're like, oh, and I think Micah said, oh, maybe he didn't want to be around people, but I think maybe he just want to be around you. you. Uh, so mm. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, and then, of course, Charlie and Jacob. I think the plan is going to work, but I do think it will work to a point. I th I think Jacob's all in. He's committed. He's actually for this plan. I do think he will come up with that family or Charlie roadblock. And I think he'll be forced to either stand up for Charlie or not. And I think that might be determined by how close they are at that time. Because I, I see some sparks flying for Jacob and Charlie. But aren't they family? Look, aren't they kind of technically family? Great grand... We'll figure that part Look, out great later. Great grand... <laughs> we'll come <laughs> out with the family tree yeah, next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. But I, I, I felt sparks between these two. 
Oh, definitely. Still, you always feel. But still, yeah, like it hasn't faded. It hasn't subsided. It, to me, I feel it. When they're but are they like love sparks or let's like get this thing on sparks or are they like that competitive spirit spark? Like I think get this thing on sparks, but I think they're the same person. I think in many ways they have some of the same drives and the same, but I think they also balance each other out. So I think they are almost a good fit for one another, but we'll see. Uh, and Oh, Novin Calvin. I I think they will make a go of it, but I think you'll have the roadblocks, the kids, uh, and I think they will ultimately decide it's not for them. Hmm. Yeah. And, oh, I'm Vi and Nova. They're gonna make up. They're gonna start talking again. You, you, did you notice yeah. when I'm Vi walked out and just said bye, baby, to Charlie? Yeah. And then at Nova least help me and see, like help me get rid of Jimmy Dell, the problem that you started. So I think if I, Nova can get rid of Jimmy, together. yeah, if Nova can get rid of Jimmy Dell, they'll come together. But I think I think those are my predictions. So oh. it's all forgiven with Nova. Did we did we all forgive Nova? Uh, I, I, she's got a little bit more work to do, but I'm, I I forgive Nova. She's on the path. She's doing okay. the right things right now. Okay. Yeah. It was refreshing to see her at those little family moments and just her and Charlie rekindle in that yeah. family moment with her and um, with Micah going off to prom. Yeah. And I love I did love seeing that. And I love to see and that. And just even them changing. bantering about Calvin coming and yeah. So right. just having that moment of we're not sisterhood. Uh, yeah. And we're not at family. each other's throats right now. So yeah. I think that'll happen. Oh, and then Ra and Darla, of course. I, I I put them in the back of my mind. I forgot about them. I think because. they're gonna, I, I think they're <laughs> just gonna be on the struggle bus for a while because you know I think it's just gonna be like you know she's relapsing. I gotta help, and it's just gonna be tough. I, I do think we'll see this whole incident come up again about um, what happened at the party and Blue's conception, uh, and I think that'll be tough for Ra Ralph Angel as well. But yeah, as it should because that is a very traumatic issue and it needs to be discussed yeah. in terms of healing yeah um but also ralph angel is too good for this struggle love you talking about the struggle like he's too good i mean like we finally took a breath with ralph angel i feel like we're finally like, oh we, you're at this place where we want you to be that we've finally been rooting for this entire time i feel like the beginning of queen sugar you really felt like this man was on a journey and you mm -hmm. want to find him kind of like at peace yes. and the minute we got a moment of peace it's like right back into the fire so but also, the things aren't going right with his own personal, professional endeavors. Yeah. With, um, what, what does he have? The, um, the, the program. Mil? Oh, the, yeah, the, the yeah, they just shut the program down. So I feel down, like yeah. now he's just sort of looking for, just going in a downward And, of spiral. course, the one yeah. person helping him with the program, Disha, he just got rid of, too. <laughs> right, so, so uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> I'm not happy about this. But, yeah, I, I guess we've got to see what happens next week. And only two episodes left, too. Two more episodes, guys. Of course, we've got Greenleaf coming up on the OWN Network, so mm -hmm. make sure you guys are ready for that next week. But we will see you guys next week. My name is Shaka Smith. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Shaka Strong. And I'm Dontara Terrell, and you can find me on all social media platforms at Dontara Terrell. See you guys. Bye. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.